Good morning guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm on the island of Gozo. It's the sister island of Malta and I'm here at a salt farm collecting and harvesting sea salt. Today's video is going to be super unique and fun, spotlighting a tradition that has been passed down by generations and generations on this island. We gotta get started before the sun comes up though because it's gonna be another scorcher. But before the work begins, I'd like to say thank you to Sony for sponsoring this video. If you're the type that needs to zone into work mode without any distractions, then I have one piece of advice for you. Get a pair of noise canceling headphones. I don't go anywhere without my Sony WF-1000XM4 industry leading noise canceling, truly wireless earbuds. Sony's new integrated processor V1 brings the WF-1000XM4 to the pinnacle of noise cancellation. So I can work from virtually any place and any environment distraction free. I most definitely need them during my workouts too. They're water resistant, so I never worry about splashes or sweat stopping the headphones from working. WF-1000 XM4 achieves clear sound quality in a wide range of frequencies, from deep bass to natural mid-range and finely tuned high range. With two noise sensing microphones per earbuds, one forward facing and one backward facing, these headphones catch more ambient sound around you, which means more stable noise canceling and less distortion at any volume. I love having these headphones with me, whether I'm working at my computer or out on a shoot. The battery lasts eight hours on a full charge, so with the quick charging case, five minutes charging time gives me an hour of listening time. All in all, the Sony WF-1000XM4 wireless earbuds is the upgrade I've been waiting for. All right, let's get back into work mode, shall we? Mm, good morning. Uh, it's about 4 a.m and I've got to get to the salt pans before 5 a.m. I've held quite a few different jobs in my life. This job is gonna make my resume look like, whoa, impressive, right? But also out there, random, like where's Gozo? Anyway, I gotta get there before the sun comes up because the highs today are 43 degrees. Here is the mosquito spray, we will be needing it because the mosquitoes visit us, the sun is rising always, always at sunrise. Okay. A few minutes and then vanish. My name is Josephine Shvireb and I come from the island of Gozo in Malta. My family has been involved in the salt trade for many years. It goes back to 1800s. It has been inherited from family to family. In fact, nowadays I am the fifth generation. Salt harvesting happens from May to August, beginning of September, depending always from the weather. It's nature. Nature gives and nature takes. Every week we have a harvest, so it takes seven to eight days for the water to evaporate into salt. We have these large pools. First, we fill the sea water directly from the sea by means of motor pump to the large basins. We let the water concentrate there, but we fill it in the small pans within seven, eight days. Good sea water, good wind. The sun is hot, the water is evaporated, and the salt remains here in the pan. You see how white it is? We extract it by means of brushes. Is it okay if I step here? Yes, yes. Yeah? It's okay. Okay. So the first thing this morning is I am going to help extract the salt. Basically, I'm just going to be sweeping the salt in a very like gentle motion into small piles. Start from the sides of the... Okay. Turn around smoothly like this. Huh? Wow. It's not a great pile. Why? It doesn't look like yours. Oh, this is only the first time, the first one, so the second one is going to be better. Sweeping sea salt is nothing like sweeping your kitchen floor. You have to be delicate and gentle, but also strong enough to brush the salt into piles, which is much heavier than I expected. It looks like we're sweeping ice or snow. After sweeping just a few pans, I was already feeling the burn in my arms and my back. 
In total, there are 350 salt pans to sweep, and normally it's just Josephine and David working together. This is a lot of work for two people. So this process usually takes three hours. This is why we have to get up early and beat the sun because it gets really hot as soon as the sun rises. It is very labor intensive work. It's very hard and it's very delicate as well to extract the salt, but it's very rewarding it's, as it's w working with nature. <laughs> this type of sea salt, it contains a lot of sea minerals such as iodine and, and magnesium. It's just pure seawater. There is no further process, no washing, no nothing. Just from the sea table to the table. It's the ideal salt and the perfect salt to be used for cooking and for eating. It's strong. It's strong. This is mind-blowing. <laughs> so when I first got here, I really didn't know what to expect because I've never seen anything like this. The salt, act, it looked like ice, like piles of snow. Seeing the process is really interesting how simple it is. If you can imagine getting a packet of salt onto your table, just to get a few flakes, it actually takes a lot of work because this is pretty labor intensive. See, this little crab got stuck here. He got stuck in the salt. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty hard. It's already starting to get pretty hot and the mosquitoes are everywhere. We're going to try the product <laughs> before we put it into buckets. Mm. That is some strong quality sea salt like to put that on pretty much everything I eat. That's delicious. So the salt has been collected. We've uh, swept them all into piles and now we have to grab the buckets and start filling all of the salt into the buckets. Standing and bending over and over again really started hurting my back. So I tried squatting and it got a little better. Then I looked over at what David was doing. <sighs> the filling the buckets part, it's tough. It's a lot of work and um, I'm kind of feeling it in my back and I, I'm just looking over here at Josephine and David and they have the strength to do this. They do this every week and it's just amazing how much how much more you can appreciate where your food is coming from when you are actually in the field doing the work, getting your hands dirty, getting into the labor and really just connecting with nature, becoming a part of, of where your food comes from and just knowing the process. <sighs> it's tiring stuff. Okay, so when I first started talking to David and Josephine, just putting on sunscreen now, I was wondering like, you know, oh, the process in the morning only takes a few hours. Why do we have to, or why do they start at 4.30 in the morning? Well, now it makes so much sense because as soon as the sun comes up, it is a whole different, whole different job, whole different field. So Josephine got me some sunscreen and a hat to continue the work under the sun, under the scorching summer Mediterranean sun. Okay, let's get back to work. We are getting to the last few buckets back here 
and my hands are getting so raw. My skin, my legs, my arms, it's getting really raw from the salt, but my hands are really raw from scraping the salt um, with the brush and the pan into the bucket, and um, it's actually a little bit painful. I haven't built those calluses that Josephine and David have, so I'm really feeling it <laughs> on my skin. So now that we've poured all of the full buckets of salt into this huge pile, what we need to do now is cover this with like a tarp and let it dry overnight so that all of the water soaks down and out of the pile and the salt becomes a little bit flakier and crispier. So we have to let that sit overnight. And then the next step is we take the pump and we are going to pump the ocean water back into the pans and start this whole process all over again. So once the salt is dry, we bag it here and we take it to the truck to then take it to the warehouse and package it so that it can be sold in the shop. Typically the salt needs to be dried for one to two days, but in a time constraint and for the sake of this video, we wanted to show you the full process from the sea to the table. After bagging it, it's time to take it back to the warehouse and clean it out manually. So it has now been one full day and the salt has dried. We're now at the salt store where all the packaging is done and we are going to package up the salt now. I'm here with David and Josephine. Now the salt is dried and ready to be packed. We have to remove any impurities manually one by one. In other words, to clean it. So it's very time consuming. It requires a lot of work and quality control and everything is done by hand. So what we're doing right now is we're taking all of the little tiny dark pieces, impurities basically out of the salt. This is such a tedious process. I mean, imagine going through 700 kilos of salt. That's how much salt that we gathered. So imagine going through this all manually, by hand, by your eyes, just the family. This is a total like family operation here. This is just part of the job. You just, you have to go through the salt and make sure it's crystal clean and all white and flaky and and beautiful and ready to serve to the customer. You like the job, Haley? Yes, I, <laughs> I am very thorough in whatever job that I do, so it has to be perfect, right? Is that what you think? Does it have to be perfect? Taking out all the impurities, it has to be white. It's important. All through and through. Yes. So can you yeah. talk about why this trade is important and should be continued? Uh, this is an old trade and it's a pity to, to lose it and to let it go. It's about food as well. It's a blessing. It's a luxury. In other words, you see it being produced in front of your eyes and then collecting it and sell it to the customers. Nowadays, we take food for granted. We go and grab anything from the supermarket without even thinking about how exactly it came to be here on this shelf presented in perfect order. Although the harvesting process seems simple, there are a ton of unpredictable weather factors that can ruin the harvest, such as dusty southern winds, too much humidity, storms, and rains. And on top of that, as you saw from this video, natural sea salt harvesting is physically very hard, back-breaking work. But at the end of the day, we respect how nature creates the salt. Salt harvesters like Josephine and David are a strong, hardy, and passionate type of people. It's not just a job to them. It's her family's heritage and culture to connect with nature and cultivate a product that people around the world have been enjoying for thousands of years. Shwaini salt is so natural that they have a total of three ingredients listed on their tags, sun, sea, and wind. It's a dying job because it's not sustainable for the producers, but hopefully the artisanal salt industry will be renewed and revived with interest, especially with the movement towards organic, natural, and nutrient-rich food. And hopefully from this video, we can learn how to value it and appreciate it more. Okay, so now 
Now we are going to bag the salt. The last final step. Thank you everyone for being here and watching this video. If you want to check out more about Shwaney salt pans, all of their info is in the description below. Do let me know what you thought about this video and I really hope that you might get to visit Goza one day and meet the Sini Shwerab family. Until next time guys. <laughs>